Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is super exciting. I'm glad to bring you a review of Tamron's 28 to 200 millimeter lens for Sony cameras. I've been excited about this lens for a long time. As you know from watching my other videos, I like all-in-one lenses. I think that they have a certain use in photography these days and they can give good results if your technique is right and if you have nice light and nice subjects, you can watch my video of when I think you need an all-in-one lens. And I'll put a link to it up above here. Okay, but this is Tamron's 28 to 200 for Sony cameras. So far, I'm very impressed with this lens. I've had it for a few months now and I've taken it on two dedicated photo trips. One of them was to Yellowstone and the Tetons right here in the Western US. And the other trip that I took this camera and lens on was to Venice and the Dolomites in Italy on a photo tour with clients. And I didn't want to have a lot of stuff to carry around. I just wanted an all-in-one lens. This lens was perfect. All right, there's not much to cover on the lens itself to show you any of the buttons or anything. There's a lock mechanism which locks the lens at 28 millimeters so that it doesn't creep when you're walking and doesn't zoom out if you don't want it to zoom out. And you unlock that lens, uh, that button of course on the lens when you want to do your zooming. The zoom is nice and tight but not too tight. It's very smooth. It's got a nice smooth action to it. I like that. Uh, it takes 67 millimeter filters and of course a 67 millimeter lens cap. It's got a nice lens hood that turns around when you're not using it and snaps in place nice and tightly when you do want to use it. And so there's not much else to show on the lens and I just want to get right into the pictures and show you some of the results that I got with this lens. Okay, so let's look at a few images here from Yellowstone as a first example of what the 28 to 200 can give you. All right, you can get these wide angle shots like I got off this boardwalk. And then you can do some detail shots like I saw this dewy spider web here between two trees and I went wide on that and then I went in closer. And of course Yellowstone Falls is a great waterfall in the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. So here I did a wide angle shot and then I went in close and a little bit closer still, slowed down the water using a tripod and a polarizing filter. Okay, here's an example of a shot at 28 millimeters so you can see the type of quality, edge to edge sharpness that you're getting on this lens. And then here's a falls called Rustic Falls. That's a great falls to do a variety of focal lengths. That's what an all-in-one zoom lens gives you, that ability to go wide on this shot and then to go medium range on this shot here which was shot at 70 millimeters and then I'm going all the way in close to 200 millimeters with this shot here. And then my favorite waterfall is called Undyne Falls. You can do a variety of focal lengths to make that waterfall look great as well. Here's one at 60 millimeters and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit further to 78 millimeters and then turn the camera back to vertical and go at 110 millimeters for this final shot. If you've ever been to Yellowstone, you know that that's a lot of diversity in that park and there's a lot of hikes and things that you can do, a lot of activities, family activities. I was there with my family and we did a lot of hiking. And here's just one example of a time when we went on a long hike. It was about four miles. I didn't want to carry anything but the one lens, the 28 to 200. And I didn't know what I was going to see along that hike. So we started out and it was pretty scenic. And then uh, there happened to be a marmot along the trail there. And I was able to get several shots of that marmot at 200 millimeters. So he's a friendly marmot and he's close. And if you have that larger wildlife or very friendly wildlife, this lens would work. Now I wouldn't consider this lens a wildlife lens, but in a pinch like that, when it was the only thing I had, it worked fairly well. Okay, here was another morning where I just varied up my compositions. It was kind of a little bit foggy and I shot this one at 167 millimeters, zoomed in on this distant mountain range with some beautiful clouds. And then closer to me, 
I had this one shot at 78 millimeters where there was another layer of clouds and a different mountain kind of backlit looking into the sun. Let's try out a starburst at 28 millimeters looking directly into the sun. This is in a place called the Lamar Valley and they have these rocks that are called nursery rocks. And it's such a windy place that these rocks provide a cover from the wind for trees to sprout. And so you'll see most of the trees in that valley have a rock nearby them so that they were able to get a start in life because of the wind. Here's an area called the Grand Prismatic Spring area and I went really wide at 28 millimeters and I got these red patterns in the foreground. Got some beautiful shots. Here's my daughter on the boardwalk also at 28 millimeters. And then I can zoom just a little bit and get a little bit of a different shot here in the same area. But you can see I'm getting edge to edge sharpness with this Tamron 28 to 200. All right, let's just look at a bunch of shots where I used it at 28 millimeters. So you can see the kind of wide angle expanse that you feel in Yellowstone at some of the hot springs. Here's several of those. Here's one at Black Sand Basin, also at 28 millimeters. Another one called Rainbow Spring. And then we went on a hike up to an overlook where it overlooks the Grand Prismatic Spring. And this is a great three shot story of, of how that area looks. This one was taken right at 28 millimeters. This is as wide as the lens goes. And this is a scene of what the whole area looked down below me. And then I zoomed in to about 100 millimeters. And so you can see the people on the boardwalk down there. And then I decided, let's get those people out of there and let's just show the color. And so I zoomed to 200 and I showed just that. Okay, and as I mentioned, I also took the 28 to 200 on a photo tour to Venice and the Dolomites. And I just recently returned home from that trip. So in Venice, you're walking around doing your photography and you don't want to have a big camera bag and change lenses constantly. Uh, you're riding in boats and things like that. So you just can get a variety of shots using this Tamron lens. That's the reason why I believe in these all-in-one zooms is for the convenience factor. So here's a wider angle shot from a boat of another boat with some of the colorful buildings back in the background. Here's a nice wide angle shot of the Rialto Bridge. Here's another no-name bridge just going over a canal. Here's a nice silhouette of St. Giorgio area at sunset. And here's even a night shot taken uh, after the sun goes down during the blue hour. And a couple of other varieties of wide angle shots. And we also took a day trip to the island of Burano. You arrive there by boat as you arrive everywhere in uh, the Venice area. And the houses and the buildings there are all colorful. And I got a couple of wide angle shots at 28 millimeters showing some of the reflections. And then I can also zoom in and do some of the details of some of the balconies and the windows covered with flowers. And so there's a lot you can do with an all-in-one zoom lens. So then my group and I, we moved on to the Dolomites. This is an area of Italy that's close to Austria and Switzerland. It's very mountainous. And we got lucky one day with a rainbow arcing right over this castle called Prisol's Castle. So I did a wider angle shot. And then with my 28 to 200, which is the only lens I used on that entire trip, I was able to do a little more detail work of the rainbow just above the castle. And then even more detailed at 200 millimeters as the edge of the rainbow was touching on another distant church. And then of course we're in the mountains so there's lots of mountain shots. We had this day where we had some snow even though it was October not really snowy time but the snow came early and so I've got a wide angle shot of this small little chapel below the mountain peaks and then we had some fall color. We had a little bit of a detail shot here at 160 millimeters of some red against some green. And then my whole group went to a lake called Lago di Brais. Now we happened to have a cloudy day that day, so the light in the sky wasn't the greatest, but it kind of shows what we had and what we were able to get. Now my favorite day on this trip to the Dolomites was the day we went to a place called Passajau. And we had a beautiful sunset there we had some gorgeous light hitting the peaks. We had some backlit larch trees, which were just gorgeous. And then, of course, you're up in the Dolomites and they build these mountain roads that have all these S-curves and these beautiful 
beautiful scenes with those mountains behind and those S curves as your foreground. It's just fantastic. Final shot of the night was the sunset going down. I did the starburst with the S curving road as well. Then we went up to Refugio Oranzo, and that was a beautiful sunrise we had up there, and I did all kinds of wide-angle shots. We had the starburst coming over the peaks, and then we had just the early morning first light striking those mountains. We had a little bit of fog coming through. It was just gorgeous to have that clear morning there where we had a little bit of fog moving through and to get all of those awesome mountain scenes and to capture that. And it was so convenient to just have the one lens the Tamron 28 to 200 on my full frame camera. So I've been pairing this Tamron 28 to 200 mostly with my full frame A9 II camera body. But I also have used it on my A6600, which is a crop sensor camera, and that gives me the equivalent range of 42 millimeters to 300. So you get a little bit less on the wide angle side, of course, with an APS-C sensor camera and then you get a little bit more on the long side. One other thing I want to mention is that this Tamron 28 to 200 is definitely the best choice for an all-in-one lens for your Sony cameras. Yes, Sony makes a 24 to 240, but that lens has three strikes against it. Number one, it's a lot heavier. It's a lot older technology. It's been out for several years now and it's more expensive. So this Tamron is the best choice if you want to have just one lens to cover everything from semi-wide angle 28 all the way to telephoto 200 millimeters. I highly recommend it. I'm getting excellent results with this lens. And as always, I appreciate you watching my videos and we'll see you soon.